Spirit of the Living God, we ask you tonight, invade our lives. Do something remarkable in our lives tonight. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of his spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you. And do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man the mandate to dominate the word dominion means sovereign control sovereign control and every religion every movement promises one thing dominion the fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us we fear failure because it does something to us. Every time man is unable to control a process, it brings fear, it brings a sense of subjugation. So every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we'll be able to access dominion. But we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of Christ. Genesis 1 26 the Bible says and Elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion I told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation Dominion is a reaction. Something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion. Hallelujah. Write this down. Something I do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life. Write this down. Something I do not know 
is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible i said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life The second thing I want you to write is this. Something I am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation. Something I am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation. There is something I am aware of. There is an information, a revelation I am aware of. I'm not ignorant of it. I'm aware of it. But my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life. Number three. Something I have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation. Something I have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation these three factors have limited us in no small way something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives two something we know and information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitations in our lives number three something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon. See, the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result. See how frustrating it is. Are we together now? So, we have three people here. One who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant. His miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant. Not even when the solution comes. The awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself let me tell you how satan destroys people he keeps you in ignorance are we together now and he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant that's the first person his end is predictable number two is the one who is he's not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe. You see, I found out that it's not what you hear that changes you. It's what you choose to believe and live by. So this person here has all the information, has read all the books, has gone for all the seminars, comes for koinonia every week, and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results. Right? The third person, not only is not ignorant, not only has believed, but has refused to consistently act. Now, the terrible thing is, you would think the first two should be better than the first person, but their results will all come out the same. Hallelujah. That's why the interesting thing about God is when you start working with him, you have to go all the way to see your progress. You can't take two steps with God. And expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you, you've got to go all the way and then you will see that there is progress tonight I want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence I want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence 
one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we were having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every like the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly i say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say Kai, what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that I think I should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight. Number one, our spiritual life. Any pastor, any leader that cannot guide the people God has committed to him to really know God, to come to a point where they can hear the voice of God, to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ, to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for god then they are not growing hallelujah yes where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure there are times you see pastors oscillating you go for a conference and hear something and you come back ship it to your congregation and teach them only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way and then the members are hearing a lot of things but they are not growing hallelujah number two every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances i'm absolutely convinced that a man of god who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of god he's not only a wicked man of god but he's a dangerous man of god You know why because the bible says where your treasure is that's where your heart will be 
if you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards god there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions there is no how you want a man to serve god lie down you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life whereas he knows that his rent is due are we together now and then it is also wicked honestly this is my proposition i think it is really wicked for a man of god to stand up and then say oh how many people are going to give one one million naira?" i was telling the school of ministry students and then you have people come out and then they are they are they are offering now i don't care whether the church is using their offering or not these people give offerings every week even if it's five naira it left them is that true they pay their time and then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them and so they are broke they are failures in their offices they are at the lower levels they can't do nothing they don't have options they've not grown to a point where they can be able to say look i can i want to go to church somebody cover for me no influence sometimes we we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another it doesn't exist it's error and a man of god can be so bold in error and mislead people many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves they are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives the members maybe pay their rent some of the pastors collect salary so i can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service my dinner is secured i'm going to go and eat but will you eat a good shepherd does not march on his sheep he lays down his life for his sheep you see this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people there are issues people have that will not allow them to grow number three every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership how to excel career wise how to excel family wise every church every congregation is a unit of family you cannot have an irresponsible father a very wicked mother come to a church what do you think that bad father will become as a hod he would translate his understanding about fatherhood and that's what he's going to use to lead the department are we together now every arm robber came from somewhere he didn't fall from a tree are we together every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere all those who are making a mess of society came from family and a platform like this the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people gives them very very scriptural perspectives on leadership how do you excel in your place of work it matters to god how do you excel in your endeavor it matters to god how do you excel in your business how do you do it right number what now number four every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships relationships are everything in this kingdom your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships we lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships we lose destiny helpers money is not everything as important as it is one ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you relationships 
Hallelujah. Number five. Every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation. Every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings. Teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it. Listen, let me tell you. The churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically. It's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or, or you know, uh, buying pot or killing cow. Those things are important. But it's not just about doing things. It's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory. So the church becomes noted. Everybody within that territory benefits. There are so many people benefiting from Koinonia. The National Union of Road Transport Workers are benefiting. Rental services benefiting. MTN, Glow, Airtel benefiting. Are we together now? There are many people who may not be Christians but will fight to protect the continuity of Koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives. So you build people intentionally. You don't just sit down and say, I got up and I think I feel like saying this today. And then people jump. And then at the end of the service, you ask the people, what did you gain? And the person tells you, honestly, me too, I don't know, but my, my spirit picked something. You are not going to grow that way. I assure you. Did you know, did you know that I've taught us here, it's not your intention that becomes your reality, but your conviction. You want to be great, but something about your belief will limit you. You want to be greatly anointed, but there is something you must know. I'm telling you, you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do, I need you more and more, more and more, more and more. See, when you grow spiritually and otherwise, it becomes, there is something, there is a name God gives this kind of people. He calls them a delightsome land. You know what a, a delightsome? A likable personality. Something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm. And so you are well desired. Well desired. I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project, this project you see called Koinonia, the benefit of koinonia will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years. Not now. Hallelujah. My target is people from ages 0 to 45. Outside 45, you can join. But the target, that, that generation of individuals is what we want to target. In the next 20 years, many people you see now, 70 years, etc., in business, in politics, no matter how they want to hold on to power, many of them would have transited. It will now be our turn. Hallelujah. So it's a project. Just like Satan destroyed America. When God's generals were there preaching, what was he doing? To, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them. From 25 years, they were there in the crusade and the children were They left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change. 
So the men of God were preaching and the devil said, I, I give up on these ones. But he started growing with them. Channel O came. MTV came. Right? All kinds of things came. They grew. They didn't train them. They grew. They shaped their ideology. They are the ones today who are the leaders. Prime ministers. Heads of banks. Heads of institutions. And so a system runs. I mean they play the world like a chess. But it's going to change. I know we don't look like it yet. I assure you. You quote me. I've been saying certain things that I'll keep saying. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will know ourselves. That's what will happen. Don't trivialize the power of the Holy Spirit. Just give him time. He will surprise you. Give him time. Write this word down. Let's begin our teaching. Strategic kingdom influence. Um, let's define influence very quickly. I have a lot to talk about and I want us to finish very fast. Amen and amen and amen. Influence. What is influence? The capacity to have an effect. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone. Please make sure you are writing. The capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma, influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma, shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way change mindsets so the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way is called influence how we need this one of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism. It's called influence. And I add kingdom influence. We have a mandate as a church. Listen, listen. We are not just here roaming around wondering what to do with our lives. There is a mandate upon us. That mandate is found in Genesis 1.26. Help us media. Genesis 1.26 Matthew 6 verse 10 and Mark 16, 15 and 16. Genesis 1, 26. Matthew 6 verse 10. Mark 16, 15 and 16. It reveals our mandate as the church. Every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass. And God said, Genesis 1, 26, let us make man after our image our likeness and let them have sovereign control dominion sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are God's managers. The state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure. Our inability to manage this domain of God's kingdom. We have a mandate as a church. Matthew 6 verse 10. Everyone read. Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer. One to read. Thy kingdom come. How? By your will being done in earth. 
exactly as it is in heaven listen heaven is the way it is for two reasons one the presence of god two a culture a culture a culture there is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it please mark 16 15 okay and he said unto them read on please want to read go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature hold on the first assignment is go that means he expects a body that is moving action go then he tells you the strategy he says he didn't say go around the street he says go into enter a system called cosmos don't just go around thank god for sharing tracks and all of that but he gives you an idea his system of invasion i want you to enter a strata of human activities and when you are establishing that strata he said preach the gospel not to every human being not to every human being to every creature creature everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel communicate that influence and that ideology write this down our mandate as a church not koinonia i mean the global church the ecclesia our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the christ look up please let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today are we together now so in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture teach us about the second coming of christ etc etc right we we push it to the limit and then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need 
for um, your responsibility is arrived. We have to be careful the way we teach people things. Many of us are well-meaning people, but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced. I'm always obsessed with balance. Of course, we have the other side of the equation. People who are so careless about the things of God. They are just carnal. All they want is cars, houses, oh, this and that and that. They are, they are so carnal. Those kinds of people will go to hell when Jesus comes. Because they are obviously not living with eternity in view. But there is a balance. Everyone say there is a balance. There is a balance. So we have an assignment to extend the culture. When promise was, you know, talking to us, I'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him. You cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to Zaria. You think he just wanted to wear it? He was reacting to something within him. Somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity. And so he was a victim of his mindset. What happened to him? Not just deliverance, but what happened to him was a translation. Another idea, an alternative structure came upon his life. See, you don't change people by just flogging them, insulting them, castigating them, or telling them, do this. When you tell somebody, do this, the person will not do it. He's reacting to something within him. If you don't change, that's why they bring people out of prison. And they say, make sure you don't steal again. And you see the person standing. They say, sign here. And he's signing. One month later, they say, ah. They say, honestly, this time around, this and that and that. Because they, they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people. You cast away that spirit and change their paradigm. And then you win them. Amen? Let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century. I really want this to be relevant to us. The mandate of the church. I think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we are not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them when they grow i'm sure they will not even know what a stove looks like I'm sure by the time they are adults, we'll be using e-cookers. <laughs> oh, don't limit the mind of man. Believe me. Who knew that somebody will create something as, as much as, I mean, hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air, just like that. Even you, you can't hang in the air, yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air. So don't, don't trivialize the power of the mind cultures have changed the interests of people have changed perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away I'm sure that in the, in the next future, or in, in the next uh, maybe five, ten years, I'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again. They will program them to work with your mind. I just think of Nas and his phone beeps. It can happen. I mean, there's artificial intelligence in phones. Phones can feel, phones can record, they can have memories. So the 21st century is here. And what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned? 
because the old ways of doing things even as far as kingdom advancement will no longer be effective i think it was school of ministry again i was telling them did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the spirit of god to adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate is god blessing us one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the holy spirit let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the holy spirit you will become something else completely something else there are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century please listen to me there are businessmen there are there are entrepreneurs there are all kinds of people families the the paradigm of fatherhood parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please i need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy now i believe in metamorphosis i'm teaching you change now but that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the holy spirit everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making adjustments the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions 
Adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people. Adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people. Adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people. When you become rigid and stringent, forget about advancing the kingdom into this world. One of our fathers who has done that most remarkably, that is a model for all of us, is Papa Ie Adeboe. I've studied the redeemed Christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence I will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility Papa Iya Deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to Christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if I must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church, or at least in every two or three houses, let there be one redeemed member, I must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising. The key is to maintain your convictions, but give allowance for the conviction of others. Let them be able to find a place in your vision. And so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenants and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustment everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or leaving hair. and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now i'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century i've gone to minister in several places and um when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people I've gone to ministries that are very conservative. Very, very conservative. I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox. I've gone to ministries that are wild. I've gone to ministries that are lawless. That one is not charismatism, it's lawlessness. Yet, in the midst of it, I have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions. Are we together? koinonia runs on certain convictions but part of the reason why god has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments are we together now adjustments that can allow people to to come in and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know god for themselves and in that knowing god many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is god blessing us yeah you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message 
no 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 it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this I'm, I'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a pro you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything no whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets. There are exact foundational convictions. Write this down. We must carefully study the word. Please, let's write. Let's hurry up. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is found in the Bible. Timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now Keys to kingdom influence. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see. Your light as it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen. I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence. The new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism. The advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people. Never trivialize influence and its effect to a person, a territory, a people, and a civilization. At every point in your life, you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody. Keys are very important in the kingdom. You hear Jesus speak again about keys. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. 
the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws and the principles that give us access the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws the principles that give us access there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that i say i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days mm. we're on our way to better days hold on pace setting trailblazing global mentality see we many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is as marketed to us by our institutions as marketed to us by our upbringing as marketed to us by our christian advocates our pastors we are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One to read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? Global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. Right? The average church, do you know how many churches start in January? And by December, they are dead. Because the way the pastor started and was running, you would think rapture will happen tomorrow. And he runs no, no sense of leadership, no pace setter trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen 
there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6 verse 2 to 3 pace setting mentality hallelujah this was the story of Daniel look up please let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had it's not just that he was called Daniel he reigned over certain provinces the Bible says and over these three presidents sorry I'm cutting from verse 1 of whom Daniel was what please read it of whom Daniel was first means a pace setter first means a leader surpassing ordinary standards he said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes why because an excellent spirit was it because he was a christian because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible and the king thought to set him over what influence as a result of a pace setting mentality how many christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons they don't care in fact they run away when they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, have for what now? Have a God, is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41. Give us 33 then we move to 38 to 44 please very fast sorry we have to read these things because i want to press something in tonight genesis 41 give us verse 33 then we'll move to 38 down to 44. now look up please everyone this was the story of joseph now therefore this is joseph advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. May that be your testimony. Amen. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, Which, which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the Spirit of God is. We are reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Listen, for as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background. All this issue of we don't accept people from this state. They've not found an exceptional person. That's why. That's when you see them breaking the rule. They will say this is the first time we are doing it. Say that's the, I'm, a, I'm a first timer. I have, I have the spirit of breaking new grounds.
Thou shalt be over my house. And according to my word shall all, thy word shall all the people be ruled. Can you imagine? That's a costly, that's a risk from Pharaoh. He says, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over how many? All the land of Egypt. Do you think that's good for the kingdom? Do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence? Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where's my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. Say it again. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are any hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you Leadership is the passion to excel. When I talk of leadership, I don't just mean ruling. Leadership in terms of excelling. The passion to excel at an uncommon level. I'm explaining to you what pace-setting, trailblazing global mentality is. In one word, is leadership. The passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere. Listen. The reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, my name is Nas Dangote. Even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And No, 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 no. a passion to excel you are in agriculture you are thinking how do i lead not kai how do i get my small one mudu of beans me and my wife she's not even complaining you are not pace setting you are not trailblazing remember 
that if all you want to do is succeed you are carnal but if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow god come into that space you are an ambassador always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit and then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you i will never be small i hate it and it is for the kingdom number two the second key to kingdom influence is character you want to command kingdom influence in our generation today you need character everybody say character what is character christ likeness moral uprightness second peter chapter one from verse 5 to 9 talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life the bible says listen to me the bible says um all things are lawful but not all things are expedient all things are permissible but not all things are necessary on your journey to influence there are weights some things are not necessarily sinful they are just weights wait character moral uprightness from the way you speak the way you dress the way you behave you want to be a leader you are in a place they are sharing food ah, i have not got you you are just stretching you are not a leader god cannot promote you to disgrace him like that there is a decorum there is a protocol for great people I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life but you must be disciplined you are dressing you iron your clothes you talk well you see people you greet them you don't see somebody like our daddy here and say ah daddy how are you prof you know as if you are talking to to yourself no. character there are many people who do not have character moral uprightness you see an elderly woman moving your mother something you cannot help her pick up the load no character there's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away we we associate youthfulness to wildness that means if you are temperate people think you are too cold be wild You won't be a leader that way look at how teachers the teachers in our school who teach our students you see how they dress you see how they talk now i'm not against anything but a young man comes rings in his five hands i'm not against all of those things but you are not it's not seen but it's a weight the students are watching you the next day they come with it too you sag your jeans a teacher you see jeans with um um uh, what they call it all kinds of there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere i mean there's nothing for the imagination believe me if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it joshua selman is saying it write it mark me something is wrong with that kind of thing you won't go far with it i'll preach oh. <laughs> hallelujah see there is a protocol to greatness you must give up something to go up you cannot go up with everything you wear with down is you are down because a weight held you if you are ready to move up be ready to drop some things vulgar communications don't speak intelligently many of us today cannot construct a good letter a proposal 
because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us you are writing something to apply for a job you are writing you as you for as letter four you see that i need a job from you thanks and the manager looks at it and says look at look at all these nuisance to our company we have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us see our generation interprets modesty as weakness when your life is temperate you feel guilty for it because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of those people will not last long history is full of many of them prison cells are full of many of them they created their own rules to life everybody say i'll be a man of character say it i'll be a man of character or a woman of character yes every bad wife was a bad human being every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being every bad leader was a bad human being you bring in your personality you bring in your mindset it doesn't just change when you become ceo it's an attitude hallelujah moral uprightness you are calm not the person moving around gossiping about everybody saying everything about everybody no only cheap people do that only idle people do that hallelujah there are rules for greatness you ignore them you will never be great the level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life. And they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to loyalty is not a gift you earn it are we together there are so many people who see especially some of us young people and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity no loyalty is a product of a track record people probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they they are they are they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to you don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual character there are many pastors who don't have character you just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning peace be unto this house and pastor so 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 bang 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 madam is there tea you think it's a nice thing they are marking you you represent boredom to them no character are you anointed yes will you last like that no That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. The moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that it can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith but many of the things we do that's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people even some of us young ministers you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting they are looking at you you have to talk for five minutes for them to eat to loosen up and say oh this guy this guy looks very cultured character you get to somebody's house in five minutes you have entered their kitchen they are prime plantain, you carry one, you eat, you go out. They are watching you. There are some of us like this, I must talk to you. I want you to become something. And we must curb these things. Don't do that. Say, no, 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 we are free. They always allow me. No, see, let me tell you. Part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good. You must, see... There are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your birthright for it. 
there are times people have carried fat seeds and and checks something to give me and the holy spirit will say no 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 because in their minds they are feeling guilty they are not just blessing me out of conviction they just feel tall this man of god has prayed and you see them i'm ready to go and you see them pinching themselves giving signs and somebody will enter and they come out and then i tell them i said no 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 no. i receive it i bless it and i sew it back and it's ah man of god can we have your number please honestly you see that you have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you your convictions are greater than money for some of us abba, you collect and count it and say abba madam you too abba what is all this how much is my transport from where i left i did night vigil deliverance the money you are dropping ten thousand you drop it on the table there and say madam add something are you fake no but you are a suspect it's easy for people to think you went to collect power some of us the way we dress now please um don't 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 feel bad i'm, I'm just trying to work on you i've seen men of god um, please i'm not uh i wish i don't have to preach this boy i have to obey god from your hairstyle the way you look you look like a thief you look like i mean the way you are dressing and even when you are talking people are afraid they are not at ease honestly you may not be you may be the nicest person available but something about your lack of character and environment you tell a lady i want to see you she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen no come on i want you to be on a project that you must be trusted be on a project be trustworthy not perfection but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy when people commit their loyalty to you it's a trust you don't disappoint it how many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people loyalty is a trust brothers and sisters so god is talking to some of us now who are careless with little little things you just sit down and send the text to four or five sisters you make jollof rice for me you my birthday is coming by june i want a suit sam you buy uh, this and that there are men of god that do that i'm sorry if if you are in that category forgive me but it's wrong i cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department all of you bring hundred hundred thousand my birthday is coming in june choir you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> Pastor Femi and Alpha, and you who have congregations, so you people, you ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people. Sometimes we do these things sincerely, but I'm telling you now, there is need for adjustment. Don't do that. See, bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are. They will surprise you. They will surprise you. There is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you. Amen. Let's go to the next point. Some of you don't seem to like this point. The third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence. Excellence. What is excellence? The quality of doing things well. The quality of doing things well. Write this down. The difference most times is not what you do, but how you do it. The difference, brothers and sisters, that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for babbing is different for carving is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the, i think it was Oga jordan he should be here 
he went to Abuja or so and then he went to Bab somewhere with his brother and they paid 3,000 they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin 10 naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid 3,000 and then you watch match but listen it's excellent so you'll be rewarded when you are excellent you name your price you see that what you are doing now are you excellent in it please let me talk to us i salute i know many people in koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things but i want to challenge you are you excellent oh you make kunu you think he's small but are you excellent why don't you think of a way of doing it very well don't say kunu is not nice if you make it well i will buy it I think someone in the protocol he has um, some popcorn machines on campus and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one cloth and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent you are because already you ha you've had an ideology of excellence you iron it you look smart it's not doing ministry that makes you excel is how you do it it's not preaching that makes you excel is how you preach it's not doing business that makes customers come to you is how you do it it's not doing your job that makes you excel, but how you do it. Exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people. They are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized. Excellence. Say I'll be excellent. Say it again, I'll be excellent. Number four. Give me a few minutes here and we'll pray. Open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear. The fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results. We're on our way to better day. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Uncommon results is one of the greatest key, greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence. John 15 verse 8. Listen, I will share with you certain things about results today that will make you go back to your life and you will insist that I must produce results. John 15 verse 8. 15, not 5. 15 verse 8. Okay. Herein is my Father glorified. Read on. That ye bear fruit, much fruit, exceptional fruit notable result he says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this 
something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know you? she said you are pastor joshua i said yes I said ah well done sir and i looked i said ah, madam how are we you know i was playing with her little boy and i said where do i know you and the woman just nodded she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said i came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they will send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind Is God speaking to us? Results. Pastors produce results. Produce results. You know why our prayer department, by the grace of God, is like it's like second koinonia, it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results. They are praying and they are seeing results. Nobody will come and spend two, three hours here just like that. People are not idiots. Results. By the time your life, listen, I don't care how much you pray or fast. If there is no result, you'll be frustrated. The end of your walk with God is that God, ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit. You can produce a common result. Fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, 
fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Sing one time. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. up till I overflow I want to run over you must have a passion I like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you are a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain away and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle that's results there are some results you cannot argue with no no you're a businessman don't worry that people don't believe in you my brother produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody even if all you are doing is parking soccer away, just produce results. Let me tell you something. It's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show. Because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness. Not your words. I can do this. I am this and that. No! I can pray. Where is the fruit of the prayer? I can fast. Where is the fruit of the fasting? I am warded. Where is it? Results. You want to command influence in our world today. You need results. You need results. This is the apex of this teaching tonight. You need results. Supernatural results. Write the following things about results. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Let me show you a scripture that would probably really, really surprise you. Kabbalah Kora Subariyatara. Give us Matthew 14, please. Let's look at it. Matthew 14. Shabaratu zede balakariya. Om brida subre hashina malia karatu skubreya. Matthew 14. We we'll read from verse 23, and um. We'll read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone rush media just continue but the sheep was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary there was a situation those in the ship could not control next verse and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went unto them Doing what? Brothers and sisters, the same water, the same water was responding differently to Jesus. The same water. You know why? Because Jesus was operating on certain principles. Are we together now? Next verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit. Notable results. And they cried out for fear. There is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you, they will be afraid. That one will move beyond the realm. I watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of God begins to break out. I see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust, trying to show like I'm, I'm okay, I'm not afraid. There are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I. He said, be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, 
if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water 29 hmm. and he said come and when peter was come down out of the water he walked on the water to go to jesus 30 this is my verse of emphasis but when he saw the wind boys terrors he was afraid and began to sing and he cried saying lord save me look at this two people are standing on water one is sinking the other one is standing was it the water never the water same nigeria same economy same dollar rise same everything are we together now same harshness in ministry same being in the north where they say people are persecuted but then you sustain a mystery jesus was standing and when peter cried he lifted peter and peter stood just like him meaning you can bring people to your experience listen there was something jesus knew that made that water treat him that way there is something you do not know that is making your life turn around someone is walking through it like this life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept please hear me correct understanding and application of laws and principles number two results are a product of mastery 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 exceptional competence you have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously that's the kind of attitude that produces results number three results are a product of diligence there are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens sometimes you may knock for many years but you continue diligence and persistence is what separates men from boys diligence number four and i want you to leave this take home this one tonight results are a product of the presence of the anointing ah the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference when results become supernatural and consistent then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it when results become notable and consistent listen listen if you produce results for a short time it will not create the effect it needs to be consistent that's why you find out that god can be using a particular man of god or a church he can continue for many years and then one it's like he hits a breaking point in the spirit in one year he will step into a dimension of increase consistency consistency i was watching a video of steve joe late steve joe apple founder 1991 1991 he was talking to their team of executives and if you hear that guy's idea as at 91 everything he was saying they would do they did men who produce results brothers and sisters if you're part of this ministry you must produce results not just receive results produce results in every area hallelujah when our sister came up and said she got five points i laughed but i was impressed with her but i'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row that's notable enough that's the type we can clap with and smile set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone i keep competing against that standard is enough to engage me hallelujah I want to get to a point where I will be so full of the Holy Ghost 
so full of the anointing of his spirit i'm telling you you don't have to start praying for people it doesn't matter what you are talking about they will pay to get your presence in a place even if it's just to sit down they know they will never be the same fill me up till i overflow i want to run over i want to run over please fill me up till i overflow i want to run listen let me challenge you everybody here create a system that measures your growth don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself a and organize speech and price for yourself you are a mediocre when you do that challenge your standard don't do small things and rejoice over it let me tell you something the key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that as a pastor i'm better than this guy I say, great, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible welfare personnel look at the condition to be in welfare full of the holy ghost welfare to serve food you needed to serve food with the anointing so we are constantly moving thank god for what god is doing through the school of ministry but we are rising thank god for what god is doing through our messages and the media ministry but we are rising the result is too small the result is not yet notable enough i tell you compared to where we are going this is child's play we've not started anything the level of the excellence is still at its foundation foundation we have not even done anything that's how you challenge yourself don't sit down with your small business and come back with five thousand and you are laughing and say kai it's better than nothing be happy for where you are but never want to remain there oh what do you do i'm into interior decor are you a, see let me tell you something anything you are not competent in just keep quiet about it talking about it will be disgracing yourself there are so many people around ask them what do you do they say i'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that god will bless me oh i'm a driver like who where do you know challenge yourself don't mark yourself and say i'm good there are many talented people inside and outside Somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me. I said, my brother, please go and work on it. God is helping you. Don't produce anything from this. Go and work on it. It's obvious you, I can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this. I told them, who is your role model? Who is your inspiration? They say, he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk. I said, how many of their videos do you have? Not their videos of the album they produce. Have you watched their stage rehearsals? Have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse? Listen, you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. You don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No, you see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. He's still passing us by. 
because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence there are so many people in this place you are in business you are the only one who knows you are in business because your products you don't know nothing about business you will not sit down and learn you will not grow everybody will be what are you doing i'm into real estate what are you doing i'm a ceo ceo of nothing there's no result sit down and learn many young people moving around with suit and bible and, and ipad what are you i'm a pastor my name is pastor pastor david revelation or david king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me anything you are doing if it's not of standard you see, and you don't get standard by default you learn learn from the best don't learn from your colleagues your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way you rise up you learn something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access or common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the first born in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years, they are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry it's as a result of the results the level of organization at the little level we are in there is a formula to it it's not just happening by mistake that you come and as many as we are there is still some level of organization you don't guess you learn what you see today is what we knew yesterday tomorrow will reveal what we have known today Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight stop being a mediocre surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them i'm the one who prays most that's nonsense mediocrity i'm the one who has revelation more mediocrity somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says kai but I gap you by how many points? Let's count. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking. It's, it's not a mockery. I'm using it as an example. Don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam. In fact, I, I hear they are going to write it. We'll pray for them at the end of the service. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I know that this teaching is touching some of you. There are people who are seated right now. You can pretend like what I'm saying is not serious. There are many people standing outside right to the back. Some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives. I want to excel in my life. And I want my excellence to be intentional. 
set a high standard koinonia set a high standard challenge yourself when god gives you that influence men will thank you for being influential your children will thank you i was sharing with the school of ministry students some of the things i do today is no longer for myself if it's for myself i will stop doing some things because i've already created a system that will bless myself i've started thinking transgenerational both spiritual and physical not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and lot went with abraham the secret place of abraham implicated lot until he was blessed who gets blessed following you or are you the type parents who want their children about and say don't follow this this bad boy he's going to spoil your life please koinonia hear the voice of the spirit tonight it's time to settle down myself settle down and produce results stop guessing over your destiny prosperity is a reaction it's not dash advancement in ministry is a reaction we have never never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry say oh we cannot pay for boss or we cannot do this no it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of jesus but it's, it's a formula it's a formula we don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand it's a formula find out what the formula is don't just enjoy and say kai this is a rich ministry find out what is the formula what is the secret of the anointing of the spirit upon our lives and the ministry find out do you care to find out are you humble enough to find out i always look at the people that are close to me and i always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results when i look at people who are close to me i like to know what their passions are if you are close to a man of god there are pastors here be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn you are always seeing the result some of you come for koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes people are flying all over and just say kai apostle is anointed do you know it is for the taking Peter said, help me. And Jesus said, I can show you. Let me teach you what I'm doing that is making me standing. He lifted him. There is something you can learn. There is the secret of the war. There is a mystery you can learn. You can stand upon it. It's not abracadabra. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. The prophetic has a formula. The apostolic ministry has a formula. Don't guess in pride. Learn. Those who learn are the ones who rise please rise upon your feet we're going to pray and i want everyone to please pray make sure you always don't miss the time of prayer here every time we share truths like this we must take our time to pray lift your hands and give god praise for this word you have heard it will change your life I will rise in your name, Adonai, you reign on high. I will rise in your name, Adonai, you reign on high. One more time. Lord, I will your voice and shout it like your destiny depends on it say in the name of Jesus today I decree that I must produce results lift your voice and begin to pray results oh God Mandela Karia Dabasha, a cross Kabaria Daba, Era Dabaria Daba, Segere Bararara, yeah. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. The rain of God. Results, results. 
attention to produce results I pay attention results at the end of every argument results the product of mastery results the product of diligence results the product of consistency hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus from today i pay attention to laws principles and mysteries i pay attention to the laws i need to know to excel lift your voice and pray for grace grace oh god i'm tired of poverty and suffering i need to hold on to the laws i'm tired of defeat and failure i'm tired of everybody hating me everybody fighting me there is something i need to know lord show me the laws i'm violating 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 hallelujah hallelujah i like you to mention every area of your life where you have not seen notable result and say every pride every attitude stopping me from being humble to learn and produce results in that area i take authority over you right now open your mouth and pray mention the area naman was a captain of the syrian army but 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 there was an area in his life please pray are you praying say lord i humble myself i humble myself i humble myself i humble myself to learn i humble myself to master the art of war aparatoko seke de belerebos lekate pras kata balaraba e praparado soto pregedeba hallelujah hallelujah I decree and declare in the name of Jesus we banish the operation of death first from this family second from this city third from this state and fourth from this nation you are a spirit you are not an occurrence we call you by your name and we banish your operation in the name of Jesus Christ Number two, strange afflictions. In the name Chabaka Toske Brakata. Shkele Barakatose Brekete Kaparusia. In the name that is above all names. Any planting in your body that is not of the Christ, I curse it now by the God of heaven. Number three, we pray. This one is not us. We speak to the elements of the earth. We speak to the elements of the supernatural. We command the earth and every element of the supernatural. That any man, see, listen, let me teach you something. You see, the earth is a universal point of contact. Everyone touches the earth. 
the terrorist who wants to kill another person now is on earth his feet is touching the earth and you can use the earth and speak in the name of jesus we speak by the power of the holy spirit let the activity of kidnappers and terrorists within this region and around stop now stop now the bible says that he frustrates the tokens of liars he makes diviners mad so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise and if there is anyone whether your loved ones or whoever that is under the siege of kidnappers we declare their unconditional release in the name of jesus christ these are some of the ways is more than terrorism it's also how the spirit of poverty works when you carry five or ten million and give to rescue someone what if that's your life savings very demonic operations zaria we speak to you this is our domain in the name of jesus we draw a line across these spiritual borders and we declare it sanctified in the name of jesus we decree and declare that any activity that is not the christ sponsored by the spirit we banish its continuity in the name of jesus please be seated god bless you you see please understand this the believer is not a cause to creation the believer is not is not is not a nuisance to civilization the believer is not a luggage that our sociology is trying to manage no the ideology that we have been given is an ideology that transforms it does not destroy are we together so it's important that that we continue to emphasize believers please more than knowing who we are we must obtain grace from god to be the light and to be salt not to sit down and hope things change not to sit down and be careless and say it does not concern me you see god has worked with us way past the issue of denominations and personal doctrinal affiliations and all of that we are we are we are members of his body what happens to one happens to all it's an ideology that we must carry it's an ideology we must sustain hallelujah praise the lord thank you thank you for allowing me to do that very quickly we'll get to the business of the night the keys of the kingdom we are on a revision series for some of you who are just coming so many people we honor and we welcome and we truly bless you tonight let's get to the word of god the keys of the kingdom this is part two we're on a revision series um the way that god trains us in this place is very intentional it's very meticulous very defined the the exegesis of scripture here is not just meant to be part of the things that happen in a service but by the grace of god there is a portrait there is there is a picture of what god seeks that we become praise the lord and as we strive by the guidance of his spirit and through the spirit of wisdom we continue to bring teachings that are spiritual in context that are balanced life applicable and are transforming again and um, every once in a while, before we get into another level, God would grant us grace to do um, somewhat of a revision. That means to go back and look at the things that we have learned by the Spirit, correct the gray areas, because you see, nobody leaves what works. Nobody leaves what works. And if our Christian lives... Um, if it continues to be unfruitful we will be frustrated 
the bible says herein is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 that ye bear much fruit not just fruit much fruit it says so shall ye be my disciples this will be proof that i mentored you your results will show that i mentored you are we together matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 we started off last week jesus was speaking about the keys of the kingdom and i started just a quick recap how that there is only one key to the kingdom one key to the kingdom and that key is not an object is the person christ christ being the door the authorized entrance point we observed last week that um there are not only doors there are also windows there are other illegitimate routes into a house but the authorized channel to any house is called a door if a visitor jumps through your window he's not welcome although he's in your house are we together so jesus said i am the door jesus never said i am the window i am the door there is only one key to the kingdom the christ the door but when you get into the life of the kingdom through the experience that we call new birth then the kingdom functions by keys a key is a symbol for access access so the keys of the kingdom are the truths that grants the believers access to function effectively to be in experience a true representation of the image the character of the christ and to manifest the possibilities that are in this kingdom and um the keys of the kingdom are the access points that activate and deactivate possibilities the faith life is a compendium of infinite possibilities that means there is no end to how far there is no end to the potentials that are contained in this faith life my life and your life no matter how yielded cannot exhaust all the possibilities that are contained in the christ and so our life should become an like like an explorer's life we continue to explore different dimensions of the possibilities contained in the christ i said something last week that i would like to say before we take off from there the word of god is very important in helping believers know god and in helping believers become effective and the word of god is important because it defines the boundaries of god's commitment to man please you have to understand this god is not indefinitely committed to man there's no record in scripture that allows for god to be committed to you anyhow he's committed by predefined conditions and that condition is encapsulated in the word it's important to know this now his compassion can respond to any issue of your life but it takes the word of god to define how far his hand can come towards you it's very very important compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of a man's infirmity but he has exalted his word the bible says above his name I say this because many times believers think that God is committed to them and we continue to quote a lot of wise sayings, trado African approaches and we believe that it will, it will draw sympathy and because God is love, he will respond. But then you will never see results until you bring yourself in alignment to the word of God and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation this is very very important the word of god defines the boundaries of god's commitment the word of god shows how far he can help you any provision that the word of god does not allow cannot be accessed by the saints so it is important that believers don't learn and know the word of god just as an option if you want to be spiritual then take the word seriously if you don't want to be spiritual you can roam around the things of god no there is no victory outside of the word the word of god is the testament is god's commitment is his vow the word of god is a definition of how far 
the terms and conditions it's important that we know the word there's no place in scripture where the bible records that satan comes to steal prayer no he can stop prayer but he cannot steal prayer but if that seed is sown the parable of the sower the seed is the word of god and satan cometh immediately not a demon he comes himself and he steals the word are we together very very important so we have to pay attention to the word right we began to show the sequence of spiritual growth last week how that it matters for us to understand the sequence of spiritual growth when a believer encounters new birth what next what is the next assignment listen there are many frustrated believers today because of the religion of following christ now take note of my choice of words the religion that means that there is no life and no power there is no intent and no goal why do i have to serve god are we together so when believers get born again there's no motivation for spiritual growth there is no motivation for increase at best their motivation may be a desire to be like their pastor meaning to go into ministry and this is not a very proper way of mentoring believers because the vicissitudes of life itself is they are distracting there are too many things in life to distract a believer you must be able to have a road map that guides if i get born again where do i go from here and why the average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved now it looks very simple but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about god and it matters what you are told it matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you you can hate god because he was wrongly proposed you can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of christ in a lopsided way and i told us again and i've shared it here in this house that how we grow matters not just that we grow now think with me for instance that this gentleman just got born again and the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity as powerful as it is this guy is already in trouble you see there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense you see that now if this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh conformity to the image of the Christ you know how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life that life of surrender the prosperity is going to destroy this man he will have the money because the principles work but it will be at the expense of his soul but the Bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth so you see his assignment he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just pick anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth 
studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the holy spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit because the bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit number two the bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit he cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned are we together no matter how illiterate no matter how educated no matter how enlightened the moment you want to start that spirit work you have to subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit it is very very important if you do not subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit you will you will walk with god purely based on intellect or based on the sociological context of life and all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm you will not be able to walk with the holy spirit and walk with god outside of this realm if you are together please say amen, amen. you can mechanically pick the bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the christian faith but this book that you see has to be opened by the spirit Isaiah 29 and verse 11. It's a popular scripture here. Please give it to us. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Read with me. It's projected. Please. One, two, read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is what? notice it didn't say it is closed it is sealed so you can open it and yet it is sealed next verse 12 and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned you see there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the holy spirit this is very important because the ways of God are not the ways of man. The methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting. And until you become spiritual by your submitting to the Holy Spirit, you will not be effective in your spirit work. That was why Naaman refused to wash. He was angry. He was embarrassed. What kind of nonsense is this? You brought me to embarrass me before a prophet the prophet did not even come out to even honor me is it that he's not aware that i am naman the captain of the syrian army and the little lady encouraged him and said look um if he had told you to do another thing that is worse wouldn't you do it and the man humbled himself watched seven times in a very dirty river and then came out clean the ways of god alas master for it was missing they where they met with prophet elisha was very very straight narrow and they went to a greater place and while they were felling the trees the axe head fell you would expect that he would say who can swim so that we'll get it quickly but th that was already a hopeless situation scientifically he said where fell it and he took a stick threw it there and all of a sudden it came back the prophets began to eat and they shouted there's death in the pot and he took flour and sprinkled on it and said go ahead and eat it's been cleansed so the, the ways of god are a mystery you have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people and then a brazen serpent is lifted and they are told to just look at it that whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one very very powerful the ways of god in god's economy there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty are you seeing that now yes so it takes being spiritual to really really become a kingdom person now i began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom we'll continue from there bless god number one we looked at two last week number one 
was the concept of starting and prioritizing God. God only, God first, God above all. And we explored the first three words of Genesis or first four words of Genesis 1 verse 1. I'm just doing a quick recap. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, the first four words, in the beginning, God. The beginning of everything must be God. You do not ask God to come and patch your life. You don't create your agenda, create your plans and ask God to endorse it. Uh -uh. He's Alpha, Omega, not Kronos, Omega. God will not join you on the way. He has to start. Are we together? The Bible does not call him Kronos. You don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions. He's Alpha and Omega. And so we challenged ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom, those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt God and his purposes above their desires, above their intentions. I want it this way. But I acknowledge the fact that when God becomes above everything, he protects, he preserves. Two, we spoke about the concept of success, tying it with the law of the mind. It's very important that transformation is important in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we reign by light, we reign by knowledge, and that knowledge comes through transformation. Transformation through renewal and enlightenment. Take notes. Transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment. Renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of Christ. Not everything in your mind is dangerous. Not everything in your mind is wrong. But when you come to Christ, the Holy Spirit, Adam, before his fall, did not need renewal. There was no need for renewal. Are we together? The content in his mind and his understanding came directly from God. Satan began to sow a seed of an information. When Jesus came, the Bible says, um, God now came walking in the cool of the day. Adam, where art thou? He said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you? That means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me. Who told you? Who told you? You have banked an information that is a seed that will grow. Are we together? Yes. I hope you know that it is not only God that is the sower of the word. It is not only Satan too sows. Remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears. While men slept, an enemy, whoever that enemy is, we know he's a farmer too because he sows. So you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with. You can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing. This is why transformation is powerful. You look at a little child, a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years, the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from. The baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying, the baby is laughing. Where did that come from? Certainly not from the womb, but where, for God's sake, did that come from? When has the child associated cry with joy? Are we together now? So you see the kind of world that we live in. He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. And then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man i mean what he would do someone depriving you of your right and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the bible says in romans chapter 12 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed. Here it is. Do not be conformed to this world. Is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern. The system of operation that comes with this cosmos. It says, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. And that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. 
Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus there was a mindset there was a thinking there was a body of conviction that made Jesus that flawless when he was on earth and he's saying allow the word let there means allow allow this body of beliefs allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding very important Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the Bible says having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind when your understanding is darkened you are alienated from the potential the experience of the life of God it says through the ignorance that is in them transformation is very important there is almost no hope for an effective Christian life for any believer who ignores transformation. And it's important because Africa is a very superstitious continent and in Nigeria where people who are very spiritual, we would, we would opt for wise sayings, we would opt for a mix of trado African Christian approaches and would not settle down for the word of God that is balanced, truthful, intelligent and transforming. And this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of Christians that we have. And all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of God. And it's not entirely so. Because there is a species of man that God cannot produce. So when you see that kind of man, you know that there was a corruption somewhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The mind is very powerful. I taught us about success that true success in the kingdom is not something that we do true success is what you attract by who you become this is very powerful there are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially spiritually they want to do things and there is a place of doing there is a place of action but action is only relevant when there is transformation success is what you attract by who you become there is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain it's impossible are we together you cannot see papa Ia deboe for instance at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish his transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you would think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make we try to do things and the things we do are higher than who we are so the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels our mindsets success is a product of growth it's more than doing things god can tell you you're going to have five thousand members but you have to grow it's more than just prophecy there are ethics that you honor at every level of growth and as you continue to transit your results continue to change to reflect the change in you as you change your clothes will change as you change your honor will change as you change your communication your understanding as it's changing your relationships will change everything continues to change to reflect the changing person you don't go and look for friends you attract them by your growth are we together you don't go around hand picking people this is the this is the labor that god saved us from through transformation look how painful it is to go and select friends how do you know the person will not change tomorrow allow the wisdom of god to select them your assignment is to grow does not deep call on to deep when you grow it begins to change you cannot be wealthy and have poor friends it's not about driving them the law edits itself it edits your possibilities the moment there is that transition your one room starts pushing you out without 
an intention to leave you don't have to say i must i'm tired of this place no that's not wise grow there is a level to which you grow your one room will push you out and the laws of god will back your exit they remained in egypt until moses started bringing an information moses said thus said the god of the hebrews your 430 years is exhausted he didn't preach in one day they kept hearing it while they started believing an exodus there was there was the, no matter how bound they were they were forced out of the place listen it is frustrating this is why a fake life and oh dear god bless and help our generation gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time it was authorized to live and it must live there is no power in existence that can keep it with you if i bless you with one million your mind and your mind has not grown to that level your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth it's not the issue of a spirit of 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 uh, poverty no satan is an opportunist when he comes he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy satan does not come to a man with a default strategy his strategy is bespoke is made to your mindset he will study your mindset from it study your vulnerability and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down satan cometh to me but did not find anything satan comes to men and check where is darkness what gives me license what gives me access if your prayer life is on fire he can't attack your prayer life he will check your understanding of the word of god they are called rulers of darkness their domain is when there is ignorance are we together the law of the mind when i learned this law it changed my life i knew that there had to be an easy way it's difficult to give god glory the way many people seek success your assignment is to grow when you grow from the intelligence of that growth you will be guided on what to do circumspectly the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise and it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy like following the path of growth rather than seeking things when you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you that's time wastage but when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life that's time redemption so the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise say i'm growing the third spiritual law we're doing a revision thank you jesus halus kapratuskia the law of faith let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch the law of faith numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 please numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me it's projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good the law of faith is a very powerful law the bible declares again and again in this kingdom i'm doing a revision that the just the believer one who has been justified in christ that you will live by faith the only assurance of your victory the only assurance of tomorrow the assurance of success is faith there is no earthly guarantee given to any man not by any uncle not by any auntie not by any certificate not by any platform the authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith and this is the victory that overcome even by faith are we together what is faith faith is your conviction 
your conviction your conviction the name given to your conviction about god and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out it's as simple as that but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able he has an ability and i know him i'm persuaded are we together very important come Sheun, look at this please now if i look at Sheun now and i say Sheun, i'm going to give you one thousand naira the first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks i am my ability my integrity everything comes under pressure at the instance of that word he would have to verify whether number one i have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira and then number two whether i have the ability i may have the willingness the integrity but not have the ability so god allowed his word so we can vet him he's not afraid of being vetted god is saying probe me probe my integrity i've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations so that your conclusion on reading this is that god is not a man that he should lie are we together now it's not something you just believe he tells you go through it i allow you to have this the chronicles of my integrity so that you will believe me when i say i can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes vet it did i not raise joseph did i not raise esther ah it's powerful to believe god there are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system um there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you thirty thousand. you will never rise you will never move listen if it is god he will prove himself faith powerful find a believer that has faith and understands faith now faith is not just blindly believing faith is conviction are we together and that conviction comes through understanding you have really understood god and his ways when you know where how you contribute in terms of your partnership your participation listen bible faith does not leave everything to god there is always man's role in that equation please understand this bible faith will never allow god to just do everything there is always the participation and your participation is your believing god and then subscribing to the terms the conditions that guarantee for that outcome this is where many believers continue to miss it faith is more than just confession faith is more than just receiving as important as they are they are all equations in that i mean variables in that equation of faith but bible faith is not bible faith until you find the condition allocated deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that the lord thy god now watch this that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you condition if thou shall hearken to the voice of the lord if thou shalt pay attention if you place value on the speakings of god if you place value on his ways his intelligence his methodology you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture you say in the name of jesus i'm exalted above all nations you are correct but if you stop there you will live a frustrated christian life there is a condition while you speak you release that word but more than that you have to go back and find out so what is the voice of god saying what does it say the voice of god the logos of god his thoughts his intents what does he say joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 this book of the law 
shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do 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 not just say do all that is therein it says then shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success good success that means if i'm manifesting faith then i must begin to understand the ways of god the ways of god every time you are learning the laws of god every time you're understanding the methodologies of the kingdom you are in extension manifesting the law of faith it's proof that you believe god it's proof that you expect him to work are we together yes the law of faith you must believe in god this life will come with so many things that will threaten you when david stood before goliath he said you come to me with your bows and your spears but i come to you in the name of the lord god of heaven um uh, the 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 one the the one whom you have defied he was speaking to goliath you have to stand and look at life and say you may look like a mountain but faith deflates mountains it is true it is true time will fail me he says to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions listen let me tell you the truth there is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun it takes faith to subdue say in the name of jesus by the faith of god at work in me i subdue every mountain don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely no 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 there is nothing special about challenges it is defeat that should be a surprise don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it and let the god of heaven who is not a man that should lie come and prove himself in your life every testimony here is faith the equation of faith completed trusting god please don't doubt god i know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on god we make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two one plus one plus god is any answer he says it should be any answer by what standard will you say he failed if a house is my own i can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance it's my house so you don't say because i entered here yes this is my house you are a visitor anywhere i show you that the door is you follow there kai this god hmm. god can decide to say 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together this is god for you 10 years in one hallelujah the law of faith let's run faith is very important we have dealt with the law of faith here we have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective christian life the law of value proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 the bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before great men this is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie sincerely let me tell you this is one of the i, I, I can't use the word truest scriptures but this scripture you see please have a lot of regard for it the gift of a man truly can make room for him it didn't say we'll show him where his room is until then there is no space for you the gift will make room for you like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space 
and because of your honor for that visitor the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room so where there was no space for you that your gift can come and say what is going on here the table of greatness where is my space sorry there's no space no it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne the gift of a man the gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness it's very important classic um story is the story of joseph genesis chapter 41 when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46 i don't want to go into it forgive me i'm rushing because we're just this is a revision series i'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom these are the truths we engage if you don't engage this you will fail i tell you sincerely they are not opinions they are not doctrinal perspectives when jesus came he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom it's it's important that we understand the methodologies of god it's not the discourse it's not an invention of one man please understand this J jeremiah 6 i believe verse 16 let's go there and then we'll return here jeremiah 6 16 the bible says to ask for the ancient part it says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old part wherein is the good way it says when you find it walk therein and ye shall find what rest another word for rest is sabbath the sabbath of a man comes the bible says labor to enter your rest that labor is not a labor in the flesh it's a labor of understanding 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 that there is a belief system there is a construction when you hold the keys of the kingdom they can bring you in experience to your sabbath so two people all saved by god can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results and the difference is not the love of god for them for the same lord is rich unto all the difference is their understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so your destiny is not just left to god how can i lie sharia whatever will be will be those wise sayings are poisonous are we together the law of value very very powerful you will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings your value decide who decides who pursues you it is true and who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward god designed life to operate based on a reward system there's no sentiments to it life operates based on a reward system that means that no matter how bad my background is no matter how bad it was there is a bailout system i can be valuable i can find my way out of every nonsense in life it has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you it's a principle backed up by god's own integrity when you discover and you develop problem solving abilities when you become fruitful when you become productive it's impossible to be ignored regardless of tribal affiliation regardless of sentiments regardless of age and gender the world does not have too many people who are valuable please understand this potentially we all are but in experience there are few people per territory you can you can do a random sampling there are few people per territory who are really valuable so it's impossible to be ignored it's like holding bright, bright light in a very dark night how could you be ignored i show you what will take away mediocrity from your life it's impossible to be ignored 
you may ignore my background that's all right you may not like my persona that's all right but the value i carry then anointed by god developed and served with excellence is impossible to ignore it and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you there is more there is more than a weak and a mediocre life there is more than a life of just getting married having children and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life there is more than that there is a life of meaning and glory and beauty he has called us into glory and virtue he has called many sons into glory where your life becomes an influence for his majesty your life becomes an inspiration to a generation more than just food to eat more than a little house here and there i have one house two cars one estate one business a wife my children and that's it that's a mediocre life there's more than that are we together the bible says that you are the light of the world jesus is teaching here now you are the light of the world the salt of the earth he says if the salt has lost its savour its saltiness wherewith shall it be salted it is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men he says you are the light of the world then he says a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden that's the word you cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability and my brothers and my sisters when the glory of god comes upon who you are and the works of your hands your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder one wonder connecting to another when people think they have exhausted a dimension here you come like the eagle another page god does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity no it's a very poisonous proposition he desires that all men the bible says revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have all been made together unto our god kings or a kingdom of priests kings and priests and he said we not one person we shall reign on earth please believe the word of god it's not a scam believe the word of god it may take time and while that is happening different people can argue about what they think or know about your life but just allow the word of god take you like a lift it will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder and all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise it's called doxazo the flaunting of a king's glory now thanks be to god he says that causes us always to triumph are we together Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so much. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Hmm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. Being an Igbo person gives you. Being a Northerner gives you. Being a Middle Belt, a, South, a Southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. 
now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear otherwise people like us would not have a stake in life but hallelujah ah. you may laugh at my background but watch my future you may laugh at yesterday but not tomorrow between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne I will not remain at the cross Jesus died for only three days he didn't die forever man should not remain at the cross forever if you remain at the cross forever it's a sign that death has swallowed you up are we together please shake off that mediocrity from your life don't don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny you don't have to be arrogant you don't have to insult anybody but please have a healthy confidence you may laugh at me but not the one with me the bible never said as far as i'm concerned i'm successful we say with god laugh at me if you don't if i'm alone laugh at me because your prophecy will be right but with god renard bonke i remember those those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade he said even if you call him a big zero the bigger the zero god is the one that is added to the zero so if i'm five zeros plus one if i become six zeros plus one if i become seven zeros so the bigger the zero the greater the value when he comes let me give you the new living translation of that there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of god when god wanted to humble the fallen angels he used clay to make man you see the fallen angels were not made from dust their material was light and now god decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel and they said this is not fair even lucifer that was a light bearer an effulgence of the light of god did not have the privilege to carry the image of the christ the holy spirit never came inside any one angel never came inside one cherubim but he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life please don't just be motivated alone be angry you know we have these funny ways of looking at people in society you are not beautiful you are ugly you don't speak english well don't worry my result will correct any error in my english Appa! don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply you know and this are a world of arrogance even one minute to a man falling inside a pit he will act as if he still has control let me tell you the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church it will be impossible the church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are who are close within a religious sect no the social economy will see the intelligence of god was it not prophesied by prophet micah that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will float with they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways he says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation don't give yourself cheap to life just because culture just because your past just because your failures have concluded about you shake that off and know that there is a way oh rejoice not over me my enemies mm -mm. while they were discussing the death of jesus he had resurrected and was on the throne please sit down the law of value be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored the earth has too many people for you to be ignored 7.2 billion is a lot of people 
A territory can ignore you, but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power. There are mysteries in the kingdom. These are the keys. Please understand this. Please understand this. The next key that I want to teach us is what I call, you know it, the mystery of exemption. Huh. That there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture, officially, was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel. Are we together? And that when the angel of death saw the blood, he would pass over. That is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you. Passing over is a possibility in this kingdom. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall come nigh thy dwelling, but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Let me tell you, the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you. Forget about your current result. Just focus on believing it. Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities. Your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied, but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, What do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother, who said the head of John the Baptist and the head of John the Baptist went there are things that should not happen that you can make happen and there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening praise when you praise God it's called perfected praise praise that is intentional praise
grace is a weapon of judgment it's a weapon of warfare let the high praise of god be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron it says that to execute upon them the judgment written this inheritance this blessing has the saints let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters when you take out time to praise god you can praise tragedy out of your life you can praise limitation out of your life. You've heard many people's testimonies here. They lock themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horse is and his rider. Not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not... You find it in Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Praise. <clears throat> you exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice sacrifice is very powerful psalms 50 and verse 5 i'm just doing a quick recap we have all these teachings you can go and listen to them gather unto me my saints the bible declares they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice by sacrifice by sacrifice there are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered sacrifice the Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. And that night, not the next day, that same night, the Lord came to him and said, Solomon, ask what he will. And then he asked, not for the life of his enemy, but for wisdom to govern the people. And he said, you did not ask for the life of your enemy, nor riches, nor this. Because of that, I will give you an understanding heart, he said. And with it, I will give you riches, I will give you wealth and honor, and so on and so forth. Sacrifice is powerful. Unfortunately, I know that it has been abused, you know, especially by we men of God who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money. But just because something was, was abused, the word abuse comes from two words, abnormal use. That means when you take the use out of its, its boundary of relevance. Just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bathwater. Sacrifice is powerful. You can sow your way out of realms. You can sow your way into realms. Sacrifice that is done with understanding, not manipulation, not coercion. As a testimony, one time when, when we started Koinonia, I think the, the first year or so, we're just about a year or so. I remember one time, the beginning of that year, the Lord gave an instruction to carry everything, literally everything, 0, 0.00. Carry everything and so. And I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. Not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a mother of miracles to this ministry, even financially. Wow. 
Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God, and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law. Spiritual law. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. These are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships please understand this everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships we are relational beings in fact the faith work starts with a relationship a relationship with jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and david said ah i answer amen for this for even myself and david said is there yet any that is left in the house of saul that i may show him kindness for whose sake not for his sake for jonah because you are related to jonathan i want to change your life next verse and there was in the house of one saul a servant whose name was ziba and they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Hmm is a son but he's a son that cannot help himself next verse and the king said unto him where is he and he said behold he's in laudeba and so on and so forth verse five let's hurry up i just want us to get the, the central message and the and the king david sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of amiel from laudeba six now when mephibosheth ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the spirit of God. Man can show man kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you every blessing comes from god through men to men there is no blessing that comes from god to men no it comes from god through men to men every good thing lives from satan through men to men or from men for jonathan thy father's sake and i will restore thee all the land of saul thy father 
and thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Ah! What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah. None like you. Water you turn to say. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. We're talking the God of heaven here. God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Hmm. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No. It's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9, we're reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, Please listen. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him now listen and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat but Mephibosheth thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table and now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants didn't the king see his sons Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited, but in this kingdom there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Listen. And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. 
did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah, but there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check but he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision divine connectors number two the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access these ones are people who have influence they are gatekeepers of industries halus kaprando kashubria who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this, sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. There are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there because their stewardship is a covenant they are not even there because of what they did they are sitting on another covenant that god's integrity must protect although they are unbelievers ishmael today remains there to the heart of god in spite of his pungency against the gospel because he will always remember abraham my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth in a desert land yet they are prosperous because God is a covenant keeping God. So when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living, find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God. Forget that they are rebelling while they are there. Their children will pay for it. But for that time, no, your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor. And you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results. What I tell you is called spiritual intelligence. It's true. These are the kinds that you need favor, influence. Did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph? He just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph. Notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh, they were allowed to serve their God. And Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest Potiphar, the priest of On, as a wife to a man who's another god somewhere, and he still gave him as a wife. And in, in the land of Goshen, the people can't, it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph, that was when their oppression started. So, even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally, you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three 
the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by god you will see a big church of five thousand people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people i have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of god but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a i mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people i'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer lord send me gifted people make my life easy you have a business because of scarcity you you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so, so 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 person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person, i'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing ceo and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted i pray this prayer all the time and i tell you sincerely and i i i, I stand broken before god to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people the workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people has saved me the stress of any other thing i focus on the ministry of prayer and the word please you need gifted people in your life otherwise life will be hard you can't do everything by yourself hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth the midwife that threw Mephibosheth she was called a midwife what happened that she threw the guy down do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child lord send me gifted people in the name of jesus christ and the last of all very quickly they are called burden bearers the last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers during the your down times in life you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne. They love you because of who you are. The flat tree of success can kill. People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died yet, there would be a problem because he needed to die a curse, not just to die a man. Curse is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So if he died on the way, that's not redemption, that's obituary. And then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene. The black man, the nigger, and he, the guy gladly carried the cross. Let me tell you, I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said, you will become our king. It's not everybody that is looking for results. There are people who will stay with you. As the landlord is driving you, they will stand there and say, no, I will not run away. men are selfish by design please every leader hear me you need to trust god for the grace for real burden bearers men and women who can cry with you they can say hosanna 
but when you're on your way to the cross you will only see Mary and John there burden bearers there are men of God when they are, we start building project everybody just runs away when the building is completed people come and dance again to acknowledge God burden bearers even the disciples ran away but there was a woman who said let me risk my life I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body I hope you know that was why she went she carried to go and purify his body what if she died on the way a burden bearer will be like roof to Naomi your God will be my God and your people will be my people many people when they're in their dark days they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well but you must pray for burden bearers there is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say pastor I love you I will stand by you all the way are we together I'm robber steal from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks I will be cooking for you don't tell anybody I have to stay here I hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen there are burden bearers again I thank God for the privilege you know many men of God for many men of God their greatest fear in fact many successful people their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad I tell you God has taken that fear out of my life God has given me not only trusted people not only gifted people not everybody old but there are people God has put in my life that I know if they put a gun today they will stand and take that bullet Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice Taking the pain and the sorrow away, you've given me peace. Something I have known. There's no need to cry, cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Listen, you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound. Listen listen please sit down we'll pray shortly listen the bible talks jesus himself was teaching and jesus spoke about a man and robbers were laid that man are we together and he was on the a priest came and a priest saw him and left going to church a pharisee came and left him but there was a man called good samaritan no name good samaritan he was identified by where he was coming from his territory and his character good Samaritan and the man sat down he bandaged this man took him to a private inn to keep him and said I will take care of him I'm about to go and do something when I come back whatever the cost is that's a burden bearer that's not an advisor there are people who will come and see your child your daughter your son and look at things work as ah, what is this you mean he has been writing work for five years i will conduct a personal tutorial when you see a burden bearer you will think they charm them they will carry your own load on their own head you are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer you have entered the Sabbath. the person may not be a millionaire he will be collecting hundred thousand and depositing 60,000 say this is my contribution 
there are real burden bearers not everyone on earth is wicked you have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you you select your possibilities in prayer this ministry by the grace of God has been privileged to have burden bearers men and women who arise by the spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but i've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if god did not call them themselves burden bearers It is painful to be alone it is painful to be alone there are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children they had just five or six of their own children but they raise up to 50 children of other people and these people in old age will be in the hospital are we together now looking for one million for a treatment and all those 40 people they raised not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it a burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping that's his assignment to insist till you laugh why are you about to go away so i'm in 200 level my father just died my mother just died they don't sit down and say are we from the same village that's not a burden bearer is your what was your father did he know my father mm. i stand and i say this come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number i will be putting 10 10 000 until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers that's why they don't announce we have a project of you know god designed men to be burden bearers this crying on stage for money every week no a real burden bearer will sit down and find needs why is this pastor's shoe removing that shoe would the pastor would never wear that shoe again had this shoe no no it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we notice that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer may your wife be your burden bearer husband and may your husband may, may, what's the next one now may your husband be a burden bearer wife be, because listen let me tell you if your spouse is not a burden bearer you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital you've seen these things happen some persons are in the hospital some people are selling their property hoping that they will die and then they later come and leave is is when they are alive they now find out that half of the estate had gone in expectation that you would die is that a spouse this is why we will continue by the spirit of god listen to me let me just digress for 10 seconds this is why we will continue to guide people you now sometimes people make very very poor marital choices carelessly these are the things to think about 
Father, is this person a burden bearer? Not for now, for the days that come. There are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man. He can't talk, he can't walk, yet she's laughing. They say, say something about your husband. Say, even if we return in this life, I want him to still be my husband. That's a burden bearer. my generation hear me open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life burden bearers in my life i have seen this there are men of god who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there i am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world and you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said look this and that and that and burden bearers the lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it if you don't have a burden bearer you will pay for everything the one who will help you drive your car you will pay the one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay. Because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you. Please just go. Live your life. Leave this old woman. And Ruth said, no way. No way. Mama, I'm not going anywhere. That means even if my future is ruined, let it be at the instance of our relationship your god will be my god your people will be my people our time is gone ah. can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor will i end without teaching this as you are agreeing to give me five minutes it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me you will go home after the grace Let's sit down. This spiritual mystery, second only to the law of encounter, is the greatest truth I have found. The law of honor. The mystery behind the sudden rising of people. Like a charm. A man just evaporates and you don't see him again. And the only place you find him is above. Honor. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please listen. Five minutes and we're done. Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating and then if need be honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him out, for their uniqueness Honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people. Please, if you can, I recommend that you listen to my teaching that I did at the King's Court, RCCG, the King's Court. Listen to it. I spoke on the book of Esther. The book of Esther starts in a very interesting way. Please lend me five minutes. We're still at that. 
The Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man, a king called Ahasuerus. The Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his, his might. And then the Bible tells us about a woman called Vashti. Are we together? So the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman. The king calls for Vashti to come. To come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and vashti refused when she refused the king being a very good man he kept quiet with the issue but then the advisors of the king said uh, 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 uh. this woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman if you permit this dishonor our wives and our women will start the same thing too do something about it and Vashti is banished are we together that means everything was in place in a palace the throne is still there the treasures are still there but dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two everything still in place intelligence is there the security there her man is there but one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene 3 a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called Shushan, are we together now? The little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king. Honor. She honored the man and she came. Honor and favor works peri pursue. There may not be time to talk about favor, but if you, if you, if you practice honor automatically, you will find favor. Favor is the reward for honor. Are we together? So when she came there, the Bible says in Esther chapter 2, please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17, that there was a grace for favor that was upon her. Now when the turn of Esther came and so on and so forth, she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her favor is a grace that works with sight when the, when the grace for favor is upon you only a blind man will ignore blessing you provided there is a man that has the eye that can see they are compelled to bless you verse 17 and the king loved esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but her surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of vashti are we together and then when you read on you will find out that a lot began to happen and she declared a fast because of the threat of her man his plot to destroy the people of God and she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer the scepter and invited and said what should I do a wise woman look at honor honor is a weapon in that in the book of Esther there is no priest in the book of Esther there is no prophet in the book of Esther, there is no apostle. In the book of Esther, there is no war. There is only a woman. But she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor. She honored her man to his grave. Honor is a weapon. It not only lifts, it can kill. A wise, a foolish woman would have told the king and said, King! A man wants to destroy us. Will you watch your beautiful bride go? See that? But a wise woman, when he gave her an opportunity, 
her honor, she discerned his mood and she said, Oh king, I want to give you what the first wife didn't give you. It was her not honoring you that took her out of the place. Grant me the opportunity to present a banquet. And the king said, finally, I find a woman who understands that with all humility, I am king over 127 provinces. Talk about my province first before my request. Don't, before your, don't come before me and request. Talk about the province. Don't ignore the achievement. It's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest, then your needs come later. So when you go to this king called your father, when you start, it is hallowed be your name. Then thy kingdom come. Then your will, O king, be done on earth. Then when you are done, then give us this day our daily is a formula the king's interest first before your needs so esther prepares a banquet and then notice she also requested please let her man also come when you fight a great man's friend too soon even if it's your enemy you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally a man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it he said do it again he said with all pleasure my king honor remember somebody is dying no but honor is the one killing the person and then another banquet is prepared and then the bible says she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes there is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people who is that that her man Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be problem. The man went to the, king, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah, you are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. It, it's just doom. And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. A man didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. Her man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies her man's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Please hear me honor is powerful dishonor is dangerous there is only one reason why men fail in life carry this message dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles one more time dishonor to god dishonor to men and dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time i have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister i will never never dishonor the man of god dishonor their protocol dishonor their system i will walk within what is provided it's called honor it's not weakness honor your father and your mother that your days may be long 
I tell you why many young people are dying like chickens. Dishonor. 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 The law of honor has changed my life. The law of honor has lifted me, lifted this great ministry. You can earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. When they say mention your streams of income, don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry. Say honor. A wise man will clap for you. Honor is powerful. It can change your life. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Honor is powerful. I continue to walk this law like a chess and you walk this law there is no power in existence I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry I truly love them and I honor them we prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way a token of honor honor is very powerful let me tell you this when God makes men like you no matter what is done a, within the context of that generation you have entered your sabbath it is not enough for god to like you alone the man he uses must like you god can tell pastor femi come pastor femi i'm rounding up god can tell pastor femi to bless me he can reject that instruction while he's struggling with obedience i'm suffering i will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed but it will remain in the dream God agreed, a man disagreed and paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor. Is what we continue to teach in this ministry. Please hear me. You are part of this spiritual family. One of the signature traits of your life must be honor. Don't talk to people anyhow. You see elderly people, you insult everybody. Huh? No. An elderly woman is carrying something marked. Please can I help you? Oh, I'm a man of God. So what? Demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence. Don't dishonor our children. You see my children here. Even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their clothes. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said these people were just lucky all these people how can a young man live? if not uh, i hear your father was this and that is it dishonor is why many people are poor and broke they see every rich man and just think he was dash he was luck no every successful man especially a successful young man you no know, one time we were traveling somewhere and I sat close to someone and I was sleeping. It was so bad. You know this kind of sleep? You are going like this all around because you are tired. And then, you know, the person was trying to, ah, you're a young man. What kind of sleep is this? I just looked at him and I nodded my head. I said, you see, this is the kind of thing you are talking about. You are not asking why I'm seated where you are seated at my age. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen, please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding results. Listen to it. One day, get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job. Don't say it's my younger brother, it's my younger sister, it's my. When I was in, in, in SS, uh, um, SS3, he was all those, all those superstitious, trado African approach to life. You, you, you will be punished again and again. I have a great deal of respect for people who honor me. Sincerely. If you, if you, if you trivialize what I represent, I will not fight you. 
but I will never prophesy to you. You will not be, you will not be close. You will not be around my life again because I'm going to waste my time. I don't love, I don't hate you. I will not do that. I will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old. No, I honor all men. Beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous to your growth. Not to flatter you, but please, if you have 127 provinces, it is not a bad thing to have a feast. O oh, Ahasuerus. 127 provinces is not a kiosk. Let us learn to practice honor. Some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents. Your father is a prof. Your mother is a prof. You are there sweeping the ground in life. You can say, Daddy, Mommy, please. Whatever I have done, whatever needs to come on my head, how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare? I'm telling you this. There are parents who never went to school, but they raised 10 children. Not one of them is an arm robber. You think it's just, there is a grace there. One child is about to kill you. Go and meet them. Buy something they like and say, please, place something on my destiny. When I was about to start ministry, I met my father and my mother. And I told them, I said, I told my mother, I said, you are a pastor's daughter. Your father was a pioneer. My grandfather was the first cooking president. The first cooking president and is that pioneer grace i want i knelt down when you are too big to honor you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor There are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but i've helped the protocol to see just be opened be open i will see how i will adjust anything Not that you stand and say i'm apostle joshua selman and crash down honor is powerful you are the one who loses when you dishonor men we have to stop here Teach your children to honor. Don't see a stranger and come and slap him. You spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say, I did not give birth to this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must change. You must become like your father. Pamper your child to have something, some, produce something that would destroy you. There are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague they are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closest towards you i never find a man that carries something i need and i will keep quiet with it no one day god will give you an opportunity to see how i honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret i had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room. I was granted the opportunity and the tour, and I said, Please grant me the grace. I said, What is there? Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. When I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to David Yonggi Cho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yonggi Cho called him to come and pray for him. Ah. I made sure that I treated every staff there 
the staff were there, apostle you are the apostle pray for me i said no i know that i will pray for you but i came here to carry a grace oh no the person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not you may need but don't have are we together yes the gentleman may not have money but he has character is a grace and is transferable the person seated next to you no matter what happens there is a covenant of supplies quarter to shame help must rise from somewhere you think it's not an issue to honor some of our mothers and fathers seated here the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives they can just look at you and say bless you and that's it and many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it we never rise we never shine and our light never comes please rise up on your feet i apologize for taking our time hold hands with someone i'm going to pray these are the ways of the kingdom Just one prayer and we are done tonight. I apologize. Our time is up. I don't know which of these laws I have shared with you. I don't know which of these mysteries. Please hear me. I don't know which of these spiritual mysteries you have compromised on. But it's time to cry to God. I have said there are many of them. This is a revision. Just come hold him. Please help him so that he which of these mysteries that you need to know which one am i missing don't say things are not working in my life nothing works till you engage it there has to be something you are missing maybe it is dishonor maybe you are not putting your faith to work are we together maybe your mind you are trying to acquire things in your life that has not come by growth please whatever category lift up your voice in two minutes let's cry to god we came to church tonight. Church is a place of transformation. The Lord has declared by His Spirit that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. My life is changing. Prophesy to yourself. I'm rising by the Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. One minute and we're done. Outside, pray. Online, please pray. The keys of the kingdom, the mysteries by which we reign, enforce us of divine possibilities upon the life of a man hallelujah father we desire to bear fruit we love you and we want to attain unto that height that image that stature we want to be a people very spiritual we want to be a people very transformed we want to not only be ambassadors of the kingdom but we also seek to be agents of national transformation that our lives will not be a nuisance to civilization our lives will not be a nuisance to any society we want to be prosperous we contend for kingdom influence we want to walk in superior dimensions of the gift of the spirit quicken our understanding oh god you have brought us through this revision again to upgrade our lives to insist that we get what works i pray that you break every stony heart in the name of Jesus Christ give us a heart of flesh 
give us a heart that is compliant in the mighty name of jesus christ father we decree and declare that we meditate on these things we give ourselves wholly to them and we declare that our profiting will appear unto all everyone who has come under this grace and this influence tonight is blessed in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you and we bless you in jesus name i pray amen and amen now very quickly our time is up again i i sincerely apologize um you are here please listen i want to make the altar call in one minute you are here and listening to me teach the holy spirit began to speak to you about the need to completely surrender your heart to jesus you are here inside outside overflows and online whatever nation of the world or you are here please let's minimize movement you are here and you are saying apostle i love jesus but at one point or the other my life has gone haywire and i need restoration please we have just one minute for you if you are in that category inside outside wherever you will need to run if you have to come please i'd like you to rush and come stand here let me have the honor of praying for you and that from the depth of my heart god bless you don't wait for anyone to come win that war tonight god bless you god bless you koinonia celebrate them they are coming everywhere from inside and from outside god is giving you a new beginning the bible declares that whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away celebrate those who are coming from outside this is a family there's nothing to be ashamed of it's like coming to receive an award you are not coming to a funeral jesus is calling you apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them please quickly i'm not sure i just know that i love the things of god but i cannot remember making a commitment for jesus please join them quickly we have a few seconds if you're coming from outside please rush you're coming from outside please rush whoever comes to him the bible declares that he will in no way wise cast away hallelujah thank you thank you so much i honor every one of you for um, the courage to come takes a lot of courage aside from the convicting power of the spirit it also there is a psychology to it it takes a lot of courage i salute you for winning this war please lift your right hand if you will and i want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart you're not just reciting a poem jesus is here if you want to join them please come quickly while they pray say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i receive your life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i am saved i move upward and i move forward only please keep your hands lifted jesus thank you i stretch my hands over these ones and i present to you the ones you died for it's an honor to lead these precious people you have so loved before your throne and to present them to you i pray that the grace that keeps will keep you in the name of jesus christ i declare by the spirit of the lord that your sins are forgiven the lord gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ you go from strength to strength and from glory to glory in jesus name amen and amen thank you so so much i appreciate